here we go and this is how to plan a through hike in Ireland part two okay so thank you so much for the comments on the first video I'm glad that it was useful to some people and what was interesting for me is that the comments that I got asking questions were more about how to deal with things in the day-to-day -day aspect of through hiking as opposed to I guess what I had been talking about was kind of getting to a trail and kind of I guess more of the like things you need to do around the actual hiking itself um, whereas a few of the questions I got were more about dealing with the day-to-day -day. so um, the first one uh, is about laundry uh, when you're hiking so when we started in 2017 in Ireland there weren't many options basically the main option was to go to a laundrette and to be honest it's actually quite an affordable or like it's not as expensive as we expected. I'd only ever gone to a laundrette. Um, now, when I say a laundrette, I mean somewhere where you hand over your clothes and they wash it and they give you back a lovely pile of folded laundry. Um, we don't have many of the, like, a building with just loads of machines in it where you bring your own stuff and you sit there and you watch it and you pay. I don't know, I always associate them with American movies, so I was gonna say a few dollars, I have no idea. <laughs> Um, when I say a laundrette, I mean like a dry cleaners, um, where you bring them a fancy dress and they remove the stain or whatever. Um, so that's what we ended up using for the vast majority of the time, unless we managed to stay with some friends or a family member at the beginning or end of a trail and just do all our laundry then. So at the time, or like when we've used them, they've ranged from seven euro to 20 euro um the one big mistake we made was at one of them i failed to mention just how wool based my wool hiking socks were and they like shrunk them down to the size of like three-year-old's socks um but that's the only bad experience um i had with those in the last couple of years, the paying machines have become way more common in like the car parks of Super Values and Tesco's and shopping centres. And we have, in the last couple of years, um, used those. Um, they used to be quite cheap, um, like three euros to a load of laundry. Um, recently, they've at least all the ones around here have got up in price. The small drum is like 5.50 and the big drum is like 11. Um, I hope that's not endemic of all of them because feels a little bit pricey but anyway um so that's how i'd recommend laundry you either go to like a laundress dry cleaners they wash fold and give you back a lovely stack of laundry at the end or you use one of these self pay machines um and they typically take about half an hour to wash and then you can pay per 15 minute load for the the dryer okay another very popular question is where do we get water so I think between us, we would typically be carrying four liters of water at a time, which for most people is not a lot of water. Um, we both kind of found that we could live on that fine. Um, neither of us are super big drinkers of water, but I'm not encouraging other people <laughs> to live on minimal water. It was generally pretty okay to balance those four liters of water between towns or farms or wherever. Um, most taps in Ireland you can drink from. Like the water may not be uh, spring fed, <laughs> but it's gonna be fine. So we had a lot of farmers fill up our bottles or let us fill up their bottles in their like farmyard, filled up at a lot of cafes. Um, where else would we even find water? Uh, campsites, you know, those kind of places. What I have ordered that I'm excited to try out um, because it's something that I've wanted the whole time um, is a um, like a quick quick straw, quick filter straw. Platypus do one. Yeah, quick draw. A quick draw filter that you screw onto the top of your bottle and that filters the water through it. I have used the iodine drops in the tablets before the one or two times we took water from a stream, um, but I didn't like the taste. <laughs> so I wanna get one of these straws and use that instead. But again, we rarely ran out. Um, 
I think as long as you kind of plan ahead enough to know, okay, well, after a day I'll be passing through this village and I can fill up my water then and kind of balance it that way. Um, it tends to work out, but um, yeah, I'm excited to try one of the quick draw straws and see how it goes. So I guess I'll be reporting back on that one. Okay, next question is where do you get stove gas? So um, there's kind of two different kinds of gas canisters. There's the ones that you puncture and the screw top ones. And basically you can get those in any outdoor store, which you'll find in the majority of kind of larger sized towns. So obviously Dublin has loads, um, Cork, Galway, Sligo, um, Killarney, Donegal, but you'll also find them in hardware stores. Um, so I buy gas at the moment from my local hardware store just down the road. He has both the screw top and the puncture style. I use the screw top ones because those are the, the stoves I have and they're just a lot more useful because they're the valves. You can take the, the stove off of the gas again. Um, yeah, so that's where you get gas. Pretty easy. Mm. Oh, and there was a comment about how if you do come to Ireland, a lot of the forestry here is plantation forestry. So when you see forestry marks on a map, it's not the kind of big old oak um, or just old forestry in general that would be easy to camp in. And that was a very, very accurate question or a comment to have made, um, especially if you're coming from like the States um, or I guess anywhere else really. Um, so Ireland, it's said that um, back in the like 1600s, um, Ireland had 85% tree cover. And then through the industrial, revo industrial revolution, um, that dropped down to 1%. Um, we are on the rise again, we're back up to 11%, but only about 4% of that is native woodland. The remaining 7 is um, plantation forestries used for like active forestry harvesting. So it's um, majority Sika spruce, um, which is a fast growing um, conifer that isn't uh, native to Ireland, but really likes our wet soils, grows quite fast here. You can find spaces to camp in it, um, depending on where you are. Um, a lot of it is privately owned or owned by Quilcha. Quilcha is kind of the semi-state um, forestry company. I have a blog post that I wrote called The Unwritten Rules of Wild Camping. And that kind of really delves into this whole grey area around camping in Ireland. Um, so that would be linked below because it's a bit tricky, like a lot of the trails, it's necessary to camp along them. They're both isn't the accommodation and camping is part of the experience. It's a very affordable way of doing <laughs> trails, um, but the infrastructure or allowances aren't always there. So in that blog post, I kind of lay out the best practices um, that you can do to at least be doing as, as good a job as you can. Oh, and actually I've just remembered the, the kind of rest of that comment was that they recommended getting freestanding tent as opposed to a one, one of those ones that use like uh, your hiking poles and then guy lines. Um, I've only seen those uh, tents in like videos of people doing one of the big three trails in the US. Um, yes, we have a freestanding tent as well and it is much more useful, I think, for Ireland. Like we've camped on a lot of kind of uh, access uh, like logging roads uh, over the years just when there's been no better option and having the freestanding tent that you can kind of like find the best corner for it to fit into um, I think really helps. Um, and then I think the last question I got that I'm going to touch on today was what kind of weight did we have in our bags? Now when we were doing hiking full-time from 2017 to 2019 um, we would quit our jobs at the start of every summer and then just hike for six months straight. Um, so we would have a lot of stuff that you wouldn't need if you're going out for a week hiking in Ireland or doing whatever one of a, a specific trail. What we had was that we could film and do everything kind of back to back. So our weight was definitely more than what I think is necessary um, for just a standalone hike. They say that your bag weight shouldn't be more than, I think, 20% of your body weight, um, which for me would leave me with, it would depend, uh, anywhere between 10, uh, anywhere between 12 to 
14 kilos, 10 to 14, depending on what year it was. Um, which, when you're as small as me, you still need to bring all of the stuff. So um, it can be tricky to get all of the gear kind of light enough without having to spend loads of money. So I think we probably averaged around the 14 to 15 kilo weight each um, in our bags. When we had a lot of food for one or two particular stretches where we knew we weren't going to see anybody for two or three days, um, but the, the joys of that is that you're then eating the weight away. So it's only heavy for the first uh, afternoon as you walk out of town and then that night it already starts to, to dip away. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that was useful, interesting. Um, if you have any more questions, let me know. The next one of these kind of hiking 101 um, videos I'm going to do, I'm going to film me researching a hiking trail in Ireland, um, one that I haven't done yet, so that you can see the different websites that I end up using or the kind of key phrases I use for searching for information in Ireland because it can be quite tricky. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, if you have any one or two more questions, I'll stick them on at the end of that video. So I hope you have um, a lovely day and I will see you in our next video. Okay, bye.